Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Maths channel. Um, in this video, I'm going to go through question number five from the June stroke October 2020 International A Level Mechanics M1 at Excel paper. And this question here is about vectors, and we're told that there is a particle P which is moving in a plane with constant acceleration. Okay, in two dimensions, it means in a plane, not an aeroplane. Okay, <clears throat> the velocity v meters per second of p at time t seconds is given by v equals, and here you've got the i component, 7 minus 5 t i plus 12 t minus 20 j. Find the speed of p when t is 2. Okay, so we want to find the speed of p. This is the velocity of p, and we know that the speed is the magnitude of the velocity. So first we've got to find the velocity when time is 2. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to express the velocity v as a column vector. So I've got 7 minus 5t as the i component and 12t minus 20 as the j component. I always like to write them as column vectors. It just makes everything much simpler when it comes to calculations. That's what I prefer. Okay, so that's my own personal preference. Then it says uh, when t equals 2. So when time equals 2, we just have to replace inside this vector t with 2. So we have 7 minus 5 times 2, which is 10. And we have 12 times 2, which is 24, minus 20, which leaves us with minus 3, 4. So we know that the velocity of this particle are 2 seconds. You can put a little 2 here if you want. to Say the velocity at 2 seconds is equal to minus 3, 4. Now, as I mentioned, the velocity okay, um, is a vector quantity and speed is a scalar quantity. So the speed is the magnitude of the velocity. The velocity tells you in which direction to go and how far to go in that direction. The speed is just how far you're going. That's all, without a direction. So we got to find the magnitude of this velocity. So it's basically, if you think about it, minus 3, 4. It's going like this, something like this. That's what v is going to be. So we want to find the length of that line. So we're using Pythagoras' theorem. So we know it's 5, basically. Okay, just if you want to show your steps, it's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. So it's going to be 3 squared plus 4 squared. You don't have to worry about the minus sign because you're going to square it. It's going to become plus 9 plus 16. 25, square root of 25 is 5. So therefore, we can say the speed, okay, when t equals 2 is, I should write it the other way. Okay, when t equals 2, when t equals 2, the speed is equal to 5 meters per second. Meters per second. And there we have the answer to part A. Now for part B, it says, find to the nearest degree the size of the angle between the direction of the motion of P and the vector J when t equals 2. So again, when t equals 2, our velocity vector was minus 3, 4. Yes, minus 3, 4. Minus 3, 4. And we want to find what angle this makes with the vector j. Now, the vector j is a vector which is one unit long in the vertical direction. Okay, so j has this direction going straight up. Okay, this is the, it's like along, it's like along the positive y-axis. And minus 3, 4 would be a vector, as I drew up there, which will be, three units to the left and then four units up so it will be a vector that goes something like like this okay that's the vector p okay so this is like i can draw on this side even to make it more clearer okay this is like this is like three units and this is like four units so we're trying to find the angle this makes with the y-axis basically with j so this is the angle theta okay so we can see that this is a right angle triangle this is three this is four we also know this is five we don't really need to know that because we can use tangent we can say the tangent of theta is equal to three divided by four so we want to find it to the nearest degree so theta is equal to inverse tan of three over four so we take out the calculator inverse tan of 3 divided by 4 
and that gives us the angle which is 36.8698 36.8698 continues on like that they want it to the nearest degree so we can say theta is equal to 37 degrees okay now if the question had said find the bearing of the direction of motion of p then we would have to find this angle here which would be 360 minus this angle 37 degrees okay and i guess because that is also the angle between this line and you know um the vector j we could also i guess i'm guessing we could also put this as our answer if i do 360 minus the answer we got whoops 360 360 minus the answer we got which is 323 to one decimal place uh, sorry to the nearest degree that would also be acceptable as an answer okay because it's also the angle between this j j component and this line so either of those would be acceptable here really but if the question said find the bearing it would have to be this clockwise angle it doesn't mention the bearing so it would probably be more likely to be 37 degrees and that's the answer to part b okay so part c now it says a particle well, this is just the, from the first part of the question it says we got to find the constant acceleration of p it says a constant acceleration which they told us it has constant acceleration is a meters per second squared find a in terms of i and j now there's different ways of us doing this now probably the simplest way of doing this is to split this up into um, v equals u plus a t okay so what we can do is we can say okay we got v equals now what i'm going to do is i'm going to expand the bracket i'm going to have 7i minus 5ti i'll have plus 12tj minus 20j and i'm going to keep the non-t components together so i'll have 7i minus 20j and i've got minus 5ti plus 12tj if i take out the t from this okay if i take out the t from this let me just make a bit more space for myself if i take out the t from here as a factor i'll have v equals 7i minus 20j and i'm going to have t times minus 5i so plus t times minus 5i plus 12j so this is like the final velocity this is like the initial velocity and this is like um the time and this is like the acceleration v equals u plus a t this is like v equals u this is the velocity when time is zero you see when time is zero this is like the initial velocity so this is like the velocity when time is zero 7i minus 20j and this is the velocity after t seconds so it's like v equals u plus a times t so we can say that this is v equals u plus this is t times a so the acceleration is basically minus 5i plus 12j so that is the acceleration that's one way of finding it i'm going to show you a few other ways as well okay if uh, you're not too happy with that way there's other ways we could also deal with it okay because when some when you got something as a velocity vector you basically have the initial velocity okay here this is v this is like the initial velocity this is the time this is the acceleration v equals u plus a t but another way to deal with it could be we know the velocity after two seconds was minus three four we found that in part from this is from part b or part a actually in fact okay if i can say what's the velocity after zero seconds okay if the velocity after zero seconds remember our velocity vector was um, initially we had it as seven minus five t and 12t minus 20. so after zero seconds you can see this is going to be 7 minus 20 okay because this will be zero so you have 7 and minus 20 okay so zero seconds will be 7 and minus 20. okay so what we can do is we can say that v equals u plus a t so this is like u and this is like v because the initial speed is time equals zero and that's when time equals two so we have t time equals two okay and we want to find the acceleration that's what we want to find so we can say v is seven minus twenty and u sorry v is minus three four that's the final velocity minus three four 
and u is uh, the initial velocity, which is 7 minus 20, plus a times 2, which is 2a. Okay, a times 2. I'll write it like this to make it clear. Plus a times 2. That's a times time equals 2. So that's the speed after 2 seconds. That's the speed when v is 0. And that's a times 2. Okay, so if I subtract these two vectors, I have minus 3 minus 7. And I have 4 minus minus 20, which is 4 plus 20. Okay, um, 4 minus... Uh, yeah, 4 plus 20, because I've got to add uh, I've got to add 20 to both sides, so it'll be minus 3 minus 7 and 4 plus 20, and that's going to equal 2a. So this gives me, if I just uh, make a space here, 2a equals minus 10, 24, so a is equal to minus 5, 12. You can see it's exactly the same as this, so they want it in terms of i and j, j so it's minus 5i, plus 12j. So that's another way of doing the same question. Okay, one of them is just to rearrange this in terms of uh, the non-t terms and the t terms. Take out t is common. What's inside that bracket is going to be your acceleration because it's v equals u plus at. That is the acceleration. Or alternatively, you could actually find the acceleration by saying, okay, we know the velocity after two seconds. We know that zero seconds is going to be seven minus 20 because that's what happens when you put zero here. And we know the time is two seconds. We can find the acceleration v equals u plus at, and that will give us exactly the same answer. Okay, so there's the answer for part c. Now for part d. It says find the value of t when p is moving in the direction of the vector minus 5i plus 8j. So again, we know the velocity vector is given by, in terms of t, as we said before, it's 7 minus 5t, 7 minus 5t, and 12t minus 20. Okay, just to just make sure I didn't make a mistake there. Yes. Okay, that's the velocity vector, okay, in general. So we want to find the value of t when p is moving in the direction of this vector. So basically, when something's moving in the same direction of another vector, it's parallel to that, that vector. And when two vectors are parallel, they can be expressed as constants, uh, as multiples of each other. So what I can say is 7 minus 5t, um, 12t minus 20, this vector is going to be some constant times the vector here, which is minus 5i plus 8j. As I said, I like to write them as column vectors when I'm doing my calculations. All right, so this must be true. If this, if this vector is parallel to this vector, then this must be true. So we want to find the value of t for when this is true, when they're, they're going in the same direction. Okay, so what we can do here is we can equate the i components Okay, if I look at the i components, they must be the same. If this vector is equal to a constant times that vector, what I can't say is this vector is equal to that vector. No, it's equal to a multiple of that vector. So it has to be a k there. There has to be a k there. If there's no k there, that doesn't make sense. They're, they're, then we're not saying they're equal to each other. We're saying they're parallel to each other. That means they're multiples of each other. So I have to have the k there. So if I rewrite this, if I take the i component and show that they're equal, on the left side of the equal sign, you have 7 minus 5t. That must be equal to minus 5 times this constant. If I take the j components, I have 12t minus 20. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write it so I've got ready to solve this um, simultaneously. I'll put minus 20 and I'll put plus 12t. It's just rewriting this the other way around. Um, equals 8k. Now, I want to eliminate the k because I want to find what t is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this equation by 8, and I'm going to multiply this equation by 5. Okay, that's like the, um, I think the lowest way to get them the same. They'll both become 40. So all of this has to be multiplied by 8. So I'm going to have, um, let me just do that. So this times 8 is 56. Um, this times 8 is minus 40t. And this times 8 is also minus 40. This is minus 40k. All right, and then the second one, I've got minus 20 times 5, which is minus 100, and 12t times 5, which is plus 60t, is equal to 8 times 5, which is 40k. So now I've got these two, the same coefficient, and different signs. So if I add these two equations together, okay, if I add them together, 1 plus 2, I'll eliminate the k's and I'll have t. So 56 plus minus 100 is minus 44. Yep, and minus 40 plus 
60 is plus 20t. 40t plus, minus 40t plus 60t is plus 20t. And of course, this gives us zero, which is what we wanted. So we can say 20t is equal to 44. So t is equal to 44 divided by 20, which gives us 22 over 10, uh, which is 2.2. 2.2. So t equals 2.2 seconds, okay, when p is moving in the direction of minus 5i plus. 8j. So there we have the answer to part D of this question. Um, there might be other ways of doing this, but I like to do this in this way because I kind of, you know, it's a very understandable method of using it. When two vectors are parallel, then they are multiples of each other. So this must be equal to some constant times that vector when they are parallel. Okay, so there's the answer for part D, and that completes this question, which is question number, what was it, five from this um, Mechanics 1, June, October 2020 paper. Um, other questions from this paper will be found in the playlist that should appear in this area. Other questions from vectors in M1 should appear in this playlist. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and on the top of the page you'll see a card taking you to a, another past paper from M1 that you might be interested in watching. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Now, if you want to get hold of the paper itself, if it isn't out yet, um, you can go to the description of my playlist. The playlist for this paper is found two ways. One at the end of the paper, at the end of the video here. Another place it's found is in the description of the video below. You'll find a link to the playlist. If you go to the playlist, look in the description of the playlist, click on that. It will take you to the PDF version of the paper and the mark scheme if you wanted to have a look at it and you couldn't get hold of it up to now. Thank you for watching and see you soon.